Thank you, Professor Omo Anzala, for making time. Let's just begin with the anticipated arrival of vaccines into the country tonight at midnight. What does this mean for the fight against COVID-19 in the country and for Kenyans in general? We have added an additional uh, measure in terms of uh, control of the outbreak. Mm -hmm. we, we have now moved to the next level of using our biological defense because previously we were only looking at social distancing hand washing and wearing of masks okay but now we are adding on an additional uh, measure which is the use of vaccines which is a big big addition to the control of the outbreak well what are some of the phases that the government has made clear that the vaccine will be administered to moving forward they have already mapped out the, the, the phases of how it will actually be deployed. They have a phase one, they have a phase two, and they have a phase three. I think that was already articulated by the ministry. Mm -hmm. And phase one is really the healthcare workers because they are, they are at most risk because of exposure to constant patients. Eh? Yeah, so the very first group that is going to receive this vaccine as soon as it arrives will be healthcare workers and maybe people in the armed forces who also are exposed highly. So what, those will be the two groups. Mm -hmm. Whether a million doses will be enough, I don't know. But for me, uh, this is a big step forward in terms of controlling this outbreak. Well, several questions have been running through the minds of Kenyans. I mean, it's taken a long while for the vaccine to get here. And the question of cost will always pop up every single time you talk about the vaccine. We saw the cost factor that was associated with testing a vaccine of up to $100 to get your COVID-19 test done at any given facility. Will there be any cost associated with the vaccine? And if so, at what cost? This vaccine is free. As far as I'm concerned, this vaccine is free. It will be administered through the public health system. It is also voluntary. Mm -hmm. It is free and it is volu voluntary. Nobody is really going to be forced to actually take it. For now, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Later on, maybe it, if it is administered through the private sector, Maybe there's going to be a fee, but as for now, the vaccine will be given to healthcare workers and those who need it in phase one at no cost to themselves. The administration of the vaccine is spread into two phases. There's the first dose and then between five to 21 days, you get your second dosage. If you don't mind briefly, just explain to Kenyans how it works and why the vaccine is spread into two doses, except for the Johnson & Johnson, which is just one dose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you see, the, the idea is that um, you want to ensure that somebody has sufficient immune response to protect them against uh, COVID, against the, the, the disease. So during the clinical trials in the pre uh, preliminary work, they realized that one dose was not enough. And that's why for this vaccine that is arriving, the first dose primes the immune system. And then the second dose boosts. So by boosting, then you ensure that your immune response is so heightened that it is above the threshold in terms of ability to protect you from COVID disease. Every drug comes with a side effect and many might be hesitant. We've seen countries such as the US and the UK, there are people who are hesitant to take the COVID-19 vaccine despite the availability of the vaccine. So are there any side effects that are associated with the vaccine and who are the demographic that are not eligible for this vaccine? You see, for now, this vaccine is eligible for adults, people who are 18 years and above, and maybe the, uh, the elderly, but for now it is only the healthcare workers. Uh, more work is being done to ensure that uh, the vaccine can be tested in pregnant women, okay, and also in the pediatric age group, and also in the other special, special groups like lactating women. Mm -hmm. So work is still going on to ensure that uh, research is done to, to find out the safety of this vaccine in those special groups. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, so eventually we want a vaccine that can be given to all of us. That will be, be the best. But work is going on, realizing now that this vaccine is being given under what we call emergency use authorization, meaning that it research on all these products is still ongoing. By the time we, we, we reach what we call market authorization, then that, that vaccine will be available all over the place, including the private sector. And that means that by that time, a lot of research will have also been done among the special, special groups so that this vaccine will be available across the board. Mm -hmm. So far, what I've read is that uh, all these vaccines are fairly safe, are fairly safe, other than the minor side effects like fever and uh, maybe pain when it's being given, but they are fairly safe. And maybe the only thing we should worry is that uh, a few people may develop what we call a reaction, all right? Mm -hmm. A reaction, yeah, but that, those are very, very few. But even that reaction is not severe reaction. So from what we know now, the safety profile is quite good. These vaccines have been given to large quantities of people in Europe and North America. Okay. During the phase one, the phase two, and even the phase three clinical trials that are ongoing. After I get the COVID-19 jab, one might wonder, will I still contract COVID-19? I mean, if I get vaccinated, I should be 100% COVID-19 proof moving forward. Is that true or is it false? Kenyans, uh, maybe we've never talked a lot about vaccines. There are two ways vaccines work. Vaccines can either protect you from an infection or vaccines can protect you from the disease. What does that mean? If the vaccine protects you from infection, then it means you, you will not get infected at all. But if the vaccine protects you from disease, it means that you may get infected, but you don't develop severe disease. So the vaccines that are currently are uh, being uh, researched on and the vaccines that are under emergency use authorization, they protect from disease. Meaning that once you're vac vaccinated, even if you get infected with COVID, you're unlikely, or well, the vaccine will protect you from developing a disease or severe disease. That is exactly what we are aiming at. And that way then we will avoid massive hospitalizations like you hear now, and things of that nature. So Kenyans should be able to appreciate the difference of how vaccines work. Majority of vaccines protect against the disease. Well, as we come to a close, we cannot turn a blind eye to the fact that there's a new strain of COVID-19 and COVID is always mutating. And the South African strain is thought to be deadly and difficult to treat. Only one vaccine can treat it, and that's the Johnson & Johnson. South Africa had bought the AstraZeneca, and they're no longer using it now. If we look at proximity, it's only four hours between Nairobi and Johannesburg, and our borders are open, people are coming into the country. What does this mean now that we're administering the AstraZeneca? Zeneca vaccine. You can never close all the borders and uh, COVID will keep changing. COVID variants will keep changing. The only issue really is uh, to ensure that we have mechanisms in place to keep a very clear surveillance on the kind of COVID variants that are circulating in the country. The South African uh, a strain notwithstanding, we must be vigilant because there'll be other strains that might appear that might even be more worse than the South Africa. So instead of uh, uh, concentrating or too much talking about the South Africa, what we have actually advised government to do is to put in place mechanisms to ensure that there's surveillance of the strains that are circulating so that we know what is circulating and then we ensure that whatever is circulating is in tandem with the vaccine that is being administered.